San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here at the final wrap up of day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Big Data Week. Big Data Week is an event that happens in Silicon Valley and in San Jose every year. And we are here and Big Data Week comprises of two big events, uh, Big Data SV for Big Data Silicon Valley, which is our event with theCUBE. And of course, Strata Hadoop, the big tent event inside the venue, inside the walls of the San Jose Convention Center. We take it outside the walls of the Convention Center. We go outside of their event, go all through Silicon Valley and we get the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, proud to be here. Every Every year of Hadoop World, now it's called Strat Hadoop, now it's Big Data Week, including Big Data SV, and of course, this happens in New York City as well, and soon to be Big Data London or Europe. I'm here with my co-host Peter Burris, head of research at SiliconANGLE Media and general manager of Wikibon.com, our research uh, group, and of course, Jeff Frick, general manager of theCUBE. Guys, great too, great event, and I just want to say, yeah, super exciting this week, mainly because, Peter, your first uh, time with theCUBE, just joined us, storied career in, in research, recently with Forrester, going back to the Meta Group days, really pioneered a lot of research, and certainly we're looking forward to doing more here, but the presentation that you had was fantastic uh, last night. Uh, we had our normal party, but we had uh, your presentation and then two panels, and it really kind of flexes the muscle of the community. And, and being the steward, it was, I was really proud to see you up there. Congratulations. Well, thanks very much, John. And w all we were trying to say was, uh, this is a great event, there's a lot happening, but we now have to start elevating the conversation to talk about how all this turns into business. And we talked about digital business, but the real emphasis is how are we going to create the digital capital that reliably and routinely gets translated into the new sources of value for customers, for owners, for employees. And big data plays an absolutely essential role of that. And we can see that because of the significant investment. We released our uh, first or, or our second, or actually our fourth big forecast on the evolution of the big data marketplace. So very well received. I got a lot of great feedback. And of course, Wikibon was the first to actually have a big data forecast uh, when we first published it out many, many years ago and continue the momentum. Uh, Jeff, I want to get your take because obviously the cube kind of goes to the next level. You can kind of see the community of the cube. Now we have over 8,000 videos. We've interviewed live on the cube in our seventh season, thousands, four for 4,000 uh, interviews live on the cube. And, and the cube becomes a place where, you know, I feel so much smarter because right here we're sitting right up on the front lines. But last night you saw the community, you see the videos, people are jazzed. What's your thoughts? You know, I, it, I really enjoy this event because it's one of the two events a year that we have our own party and really invite our community to come. And, you know, we're in Silicon Valley, a lot of people are local, so they don't necessarily have to be like in Manhattan for that show to come and visit. And it's just, you know, people change careers, people change jobs, people change companies, but the people remain the same. The innovators stay the same. The tech athletes stay the same. They just sometimes change out their business cards if they even have business cards anymore. Their LinkedIn profile, I guess, more appropriately. But uh, so it's always great to see them. And, and the other thing is, is sitting whether here on the set or, or, or when we're not on the set in the audience, you know, you hear the themes bubble up. It becomes really simple, really clear. As, as Peter talked about, what is the value of the data? And as Bill Schmarzo said, the value of the data is based on the outcome that that data can help influence. So it can be big. And in fact, it can also do a couple of things. Uh, the democratization of, of data for a lot of people to use it. And we hear over and over about, you know, can the Excel user use data? I loved your comment yesterday about cloud era. Uh, how, how funny that they were a big data company. You put cloud in their name and we've heard over and over how the impact of the cloud and putting the data and the compute together in the cloud eliminates this, which one do you move? Yeah. Another uh, great theme. So it's, it's always a, a really fun event and it's great to get a bunch of alumni in. We have some new people in and, and as we like to do, just get smart people, ask them hard questions and, and let them share the knowledge. And now the other thing I like about this event too, not only the things you mentioned is that a lot of the concepts here, what we believe in is in our ethos at Silicon Angle Media. And you know, hear words like streaming, you hear words like community, everything that we do in our business and why you know, I'm so excited to be successful as we continue to grow is we have support from our community and, and that resonates. We hire from within the community, we have support from our community and we're funded by our community. I want to thank the community that has sponsored us and you know, mainly I want to thank Hortonworks because without Hortonworks we would not actually be doing the big data SV or NYC events. So shout out to Hortonworks who recognizes the community aspect of the cube, what it's done and where it's going. And I think that's exciting. And IBM, IBM has transformed themselves into a forward thinking company. 
IBM, thank you for support. Informatica, Pivotal, EMC, SyncSort, Zaloni, Data, Data Robot, Platform, Attunity, SnapLogic, Blue Data, Cubal, Teradata, Impetus, uh, Pixada, Info Objects, and in Inferana, a new company uh, that we just interviewed. And again, a slew of others, this is just for this event. But over the year, I want to thank you for your support. Your money allows us to increase our production values, allows us to do more. The Cube Gems, the Cube Cars, get great guests, hire great people, and we want to thank you for that. So appreciate it. Shout out for that. Okay, the event. Peter, Jeff, Peter, I'll go to you first. Really, really seminal moment in this industry because you know last year at Big Data SV and NYC we were kind of teasing it out, but it was pretty clear the boats were kind of you know in between wind shifts here. You can see you know people kind of figure out where to shift their sails. Will the wind be at their back? Will there be a headwind? Will it be a tailwind? But we knew the storm was coming in a good way. The market's exploding. Now we're starting to see some things, the path to digital business, the maturization of tech, the trimming of Hadoop, where Hadoop fits, the swim lanes, whatever metaphor you use, and more importantly, operational. These were top conversations that we were seeing. What, what's your analysis of this market right now? Well, I think what we heard over and over and over is, number one, and probably more than we even thought going into the session or in, into the CUBE event this time, was how are we going to talk about the business outcomes? How are we going to talk about the business uh, uh, results in a way that actually then turns into product and turns into services? Uh, a lot of folks tended to struggle a little bit as they articulated their products and uh, what they're trying to do to get it to that very crisp and clear message. This has a business impact. And they, but you could see them at least, John, at least you could see them trying to do it. And I think if there's, and we heard, the second thing we heard was that uh, we need to bring simplification uh, overall to make it easier for uh, the tools and the work that needs to be done with big data to come together so that we get the reliability and repeatability of the business outcome. And we even heard from the folks who came in the cube from the show floor saying, you know, a lot of people, uh, but everybody's kind of, you know, milling around. What is, how is this all going to come together? How are we going to, you know, who's going to step up and start doing some of the thought leadership to drive some of that simplification, to drive new ways of thinking about how this generates business? I think that that was kind of a common theme. We heard a lot about it, but I still think people are searching for how it's going to come together. Okay, and then Jeff, you know, you see that the, the business impact, again, love that. You hear in the audience at our event last night that, that practitioner raised their hand twice, almost with pure passion. Your arm was busting out of the shoulder. You know, where is the actionable insights? And, you know, that is some of, another theme is there's a lot of moving parts going on. As this thing is, as the tide's rolling in, the still the holy grail is the actionable insights. Not only do you find them in context to the zillion contexts that are out there, but how do you deliver them and what's the end point? All these things are happening. So the operational, this is so early, I'm now convinced that we've kind of crossed over to a whole nother era. And it's the, it's the streaming thing, is right? It's the real time. I, the, the, the best one though was when we had Bill on, Schmarzo from EMC, who spends a lot of time with customers, which is why he's one of my favorite guests, is he just starts from the question. And he talks about the first session that they do. They don't talk about any products. They don't talk about any technology. They talk about what is the question that you want? Why does it matter? Who are the stakeholders? I mean, basic business 101 that, oh, by the way, we're going to help you solve these problems in ways you didn't do it before with data, and maybe data you didn't even know was valuable, like his airport example. Um, so the, 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 the myth of, of, you know, just pumping all the data into the lake and, and, and putting some magic pixie dust in the form of a, of a, a cute elephant and having insights pop out or pre pretty pictures, right? it, just doesn't, it just doesn't hold water. It's still, at the end of the day, it's a tool. At the end of the day, you need to have value. At the end of the day, yep. it's really not that different of a business process than what you've been doing in the past. So I'm reading my notes here from some of my things. I want to just throw this out here for you guys, get your thoughts. One, um, it's just some notables. There's so many to talk about. I'll just grab a few. Um, Jerry Hall talked about the transitions, you know, where the data is, is stored, how it's processed, and then the management software. But he really did that from the history of data standpoint. And his point was that we, if we are going to look at this as an asset that generates value over time, we have to recognize that all the experience we've had of managing data is relevant even today. And then he highlighted also your point about digital currency, digital capital, which I love. Community is the enabler. Here's just some sound bites. Fostering collaboration, data sharing economy, make it frictionless. Hadoop is losing relevance was one comment. Structured data is well, winning. I love that. I love the metaphor of the body being 
lopped off at the top, being lopped off the legs, what's left, and who, how Hadoop is going to evolve to, uh, to remain relevant. Exactly, I love that. But it's also a bigger market, as you pointed out. So you know, people are getting stuck in, in the definitions now. And That's I think right. that the good news is it's a huge market, huge growth, as you put out with the forecast for the folks out there. Wikibon has a new forecast out. Go get that, sign up for that. But the other theme that's coming up, and I love when I hear this, because this, to me, gets me so pumped. Old way, new way. You are now starting to see the polarization of two sides of the street here. Old side of the street, old way of doing things, and the new way of doing things. And that clearly has put an exclamation point around the analytics and the, and the frustration from all the analytics vendors who have tools saying, damn, I got to make it easier. I got to get to the value. I got to get go faster. So, you know, making it easier. And so all, there's all ramifications to all this. Um, but it's also interesting, John, that the, uh, that, that uh, again, again, it goes back to this notion of what are we going to carry forward from the old days as we do new things? Uh, the idea that Hadoop has been, and a lot of these technologies have been on the side, now becoming part of the enterprise. And some of the practices that we've learned about how to manage data are not onerous, and they're not to keep Hadoop out, but to generate additional value. And so Rishi uh, from uh, Info Objects. Info Objects talked about, look, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's old way. It's, some of these practices are old, but they're new to certain members of the community. And we want to see that come together so that we can accrete value faster. And we heard from Hortonworks the word retrofit's interesting, your renovation. It's not so much a rip and replace. It used to be forklift upgrades back in the old days. Now it's more tooling and, and shaving things and making things fit together on an integration basis. Uh, a quote that came in today that I want to share that I loved was the fastest way to be productive is not to do the work. Right. And, and I love that because it highlights uh, the That was Dan Graham at, uh, at Teradata. Teradata, yeah, fantastic. And, Automation, really, again, a critical piece. And then last night at your panel, the theme of, and again, this is something that's on my mind years ago, I haven't thought about in a while, but you know, what software is watching the software? So as you got ML, machine learning algorithms, you have the data cleaning issue, which has been around in the data business, you know, dirty data, clean data, cleaning the data, cleansing the data. Now you have a, the same kind of concept of dirty algorithms. So, okay, so dirty algorithms or bad algorithms can create bad results, so you can't just, rely on algorithms anymore. So there needs to be a compiler for the algorithms and an algorithm for the algorithms. So we are moving to a whole nother era of complexity. Yeah. And again, this is an opportunity. And Fast Forward Labs, just a couple segments ago, brought up, you know, there is this thing called ethics. You know, there's, there's, there are people involved. There's, there's real things. It's not just machines. And, and we need to keep an eye on that. But of course, but we started out our first interview with somebody who's got over 6 million algorithms ready to go and they're building new ones every day. So it's, it's really exciting times. It's why it's really fun to be in this industry because it's this constant invigoration. And, you know, we've gone from Hadoop and we had Hadoop 2.0 and then some people say Spark is Hadoop 3.0 and then we just had, is it, is it Flink? I have to learn the new word. I think Flink is the new, <laughs> yep. the new, the new hot streaming thing, uh, not to mention Kafka, which is, which is under the cover. So the innovation continues, but, you know, Lauren Schwartz from Attunity, who's out there working with customers, says, you know, they have all these stuff. They've got all this Mongo and Cassandra and NoSQL and Oracle. So, you know, how do you bring it together? But as Peter likes to say, start from the business problem. What's the value? And then figure out how you're going to solve the problem. Well, what, one of my favorite interviews, uh, amongst the many that we've uh, uh, we've talked about, is uh, and you mentioned Dan Graham at Teradata was it was Stephanie McReynolds from uh, from Alation. Yeah, Alation. Uh, you know, made a great observation. You know, obviously extremely bright, very capable, great ideas, but said. This is, these are tools. These are tools. Let's stop going to the marketplace and presuming or pretending or promoting the idea that all you have to do is drop in the tool and suddenly magic happens. There are disciplines that need to be put in place. Mm -hmm. Bill Schmarzo talked about them. There are practices that need to be put in place to make sure that we're taking care of the data. It's something that we've talked about a lot. They're just tools. And we all need to recognize that if we're going to serve the community properly, we have to talk in terms of how the tool gets applied. And how do you get value out of the tool? And also, on that point of tools, Amit at Informatica talked about the, the fragmentation of apps or tools. And then Hortonworks at the end, the CTO of Hortonworks, highlighted the fact that, you know, where's all the confusion coming from? I put them on the spot, like, hey, people saying that Hadoop's got his head chopped off and legs taken out by the cloud. What was your angle on that? And basically, like, hey, people get confused. Now, my words, he didn't say this directly. But uh, he basically said, there's a lot of tools out there. So depending upon what view you have, you can't pass a tool off as a platform. 
So platforms are platforms and tools are tools. So they're not the same, but they're different. You need tools. So we're going to see a variety of new tools, as you had speculated, and apps. Tools and apps could be the same thing. And that really is where Informatica was shining in their value proposition. So again, you're starting to see people find their groove. and The dogma is kind of going away. The dogma around Hadoop still a little bit there with Cloudera. You see them kind of holding on to it. And they just got to acknowledge it's evolving to, quite frankly, a very relevant piece of the equation, but it's not the whole pie. Hadoop is just a piece of it, an important piece. There's a role for other platforms and tools as well. So, I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, I completely agree. I mean, at the end of the day, we're looking for, and I think Bill Schmarzo said it, as did Stephanie, if, if it does the job, then let's use it. But let's focus on the job to be done. Let's not focus on the tool and then have the tool seek out something that it can do. So I think we got to, again, we got to keep coming back to this notion that the reason why businesses are investing in this stuff is because it generates a return. And if it doesn't, it's not going to get invested in, whether it's an open source model or not, whether it's a platform or whether a tool. At the end of the day, everybody has to increasingly put themselves in service to the communities that are out there actually creating business value. Okay, so I'm going to put something on the table as we end the segment here, because we have a lot of great stuff coming up. This is Cube season start. We've got Dublin, a variety of events. You know, it looks like SAP Sapphire is going to be an event. We're going to be going to a zillion events coming down. Jeff will probably pull up the list, but I want to create some controversy. Give me something controversial um, that's happening in this world that we can put on the table and end with and continue the engagement uh, post-event. Peter, something controversial. Uh, it doesn't have to be evil. It can be, you know, it can be something you know, productive. I think, I think that the most controversial thing I, I heard was uh, this notion almost of what I'll call magic data movement where you just drop in a tool and suddenly data starts moving around on its own and it, and it all works and uh, you don't have to worry about it and you get auditability and you get, uh, you know, you, it shows up when it's supposed to and you get low cost. There, there was a lot of, there was a tendency to just kind of say, oh no, uh, waving. forget rid of ETL. It's, it's, and I'll say this notion of magic data movement. I, 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 there were a couple times where I came very close to looking at someone saying, are you out of your mind? Hey, you know, this hallucinogens are coming back, and the magic bus could always be there, too, with the magic uh, data movement. Well, the magic bus is what does the magic data <laughs> movement, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Got to move the data in Jeff. Something controversial. Something controversial. Again, I, th I think everybody makes it sound like so easy. It's just, it's not, I mean, my day-to-day -day job is not easy. Th things are not easy. There's still a lot of manual process, and I think probably, um, you know, Lawrence Schwartz, when he was going through kind of some of the processes they go through with their clients and, and the complexity of these environments and the, and the historical systems that still need to, to be supported and this magic pixie dust of visualizations are going to, you know, help you see the light. To me, that's the one that, that I keep coming back to and, and the best answer I ever heard was, well, best visualization might just be a simple two by two, even yeah. if it is a billion points of data. So. I got one more and, and, uh, oh, and, we, and we, saw, we, saw it, uh, we saw it a couple times. It's, and and maybe, maybe it's out there and it just, we just didn't see as much of it in this show. Where are the partnerships? Where are the partnerships? Where, where are companies coming together uh, with customers to say, we've come up with a new way of solving a problem? We kind of presume it's all going to happen open source, or, but where, where are those partnerships that are going to provide the next generation of thought leadership? Because I, I think that uh, I think that and growth that, and growth absolutely, uh, and I and I think that that was probably the other thing. I, I thought that we'd hear more about partnerships at this at this event, and uh, and it might have been a weakness overall in how uh, you know a a brick and mortar event gets run. But uh, I expected to see, I expected to hear more about That's partnerships. That's interesting. We had a lot of that in New York last year. You know, we had, we had EMC and IBM on together. We had Cloudera and EMC on together. We had um, Hortonworks and IBM together, I think. I mean, we had a, it was, it's funny you mentioned that. Well, that you know the old expression, Barney deal, which for the younger generation, you don't know what Barney is. Barney is a show on, for kids. And the opening thing is, we love you. You know, I love you, you love me. It's a love fest, but there's no real deal there. A Barney deal means it's nothing but a press release and it's just for optics and, and in-market kind of, you know, posturing and window dressing. I think there's a lot of Barney deals, and I guess my controversial statement would be, I think the sign that the fact that there's Barney deals aren't materializing into real rubber hitting the road, that is an indication of some confusion amongst the main actors in the industry. And to even get more controversial, I think we have zombie leadership at some of the top companies here, and specifically the 
companies have had billion dollar valuations that have all cashed out and the management's on the beach clipping coupons, you don't have leadership in a market that needs leadership. So, uh, you know, if you have that zombie situation where you have these unicorns being cut down, Cloud Air in particular is one of them, you know, if you don't have leadership, you don't have growth, and every single company that's come out of the startup generation to become a leader, uh, a, a global leader in terms of revenue and, and sustainability, has had leadership in their sector and never once took their eye off the ball. They never once cashed out. They made some money, but never went to the beach. If that's the case, then the big boys come in and fleece everything. So Oracle, IBM. So the, to me, this is a controversial statement. I'm putting it out there because it's a challenge to the industry. The people who take their eye off the ball and don't become leaders and get too caught up in the liquidity of the startup world. And you know, certainly we know Cloudera had a lot of exits. We know Cloudera management like, all cashed out. We know that they're the leader. And the question is, are they losing that leadership? It's an open question. We certainly know Oracle was here doing deals last night. I saw Oracle here. I saw IBM here. You're seeing the big guys. That, to me, is a very controversial statement. I'm going to leave it there. It's not a diss on Cloudera or anyone else, but you got to step up the leadership. Use the cash that you have to create leadership, category leadership. Well, I just say the interesting one is Oracle and, and Dell slash EMC now, because you've got, you've got the old leadership and they're big boys now. They got a lot of resources and they can move that ship. And as, as you guys talked about it at Cloud World, you know, Larry, Michael, they can turn the ship pretty quickly, even though they're pretty big and they are, and they're coming at it pretty aggressively. So the other thing I mentioned- ship? Whoops. Ship. Ship, okay. <laughs> so the other thing I mentioned- Large boat that goes very fast. Yeah. So the other thing I mentioned- uh, the the, I thought you said something else. That no, no, came no, out a little ship. bit. That would have been a controversial Larry story. Larry likes ships. We know that. <laughs> Someone other, stepped in a ship. <laughs> the other thing I was going to mention was, uh, and I made one last night at the at the customer event, and that is, John, that the, the idea of if this stuff works so well and uncovers the new opportunities so well for customers and drives new marketing leverage so well for businesses. Why isn't this industry growing faster than any other industry that's ever existed? Yeah. And that's, I think, a really, yeah. and, and it may be, the zombie leadership plays a role, the lack of partnership plays a role, the fact that we're not focused on customers and what value they, we can create, but we're still focused on the tools may play a role. But it, it's pretty clear that one of, the, one of the first indications that all those things go away is this industry starts growing really fast. So let's take, let's take that one step further. So let's just say put the zombie leadership just a controversial statement, we can have a discussion around it. But the other side of the coin is if you have a massively growing market, which you have predicted in your forecast and have the data to show this is going to be a growing market, then it comes down to the right products, right? So having the right products becomes paramount. So back to the, the leadership piece, if the people can continue to have those products, that's where you're going to start to see the action. So the question is, are these products there? And the, my controversial statement to add to that would be, if people get caught in the dogma of what they had hoped they could become, rather than evolving with the industry, and Hadoop is a case in point. No one would have predicted that Spark would have come in. Those are market forces. That's called market forces. Product market fit has to adjust to the market forces. So I believe that people are overreacting, and the infrastructure is developing in real time. And we're talking about stuff that's not even ready. We're machine learning analytics. The endpoints to serve insights is not baked out. We have all kinds of stuff going on in the back office and the infrastructure, from managing clusters to having databases to having analytics. I mean, I don't think there's anything to worry about, but if the people try to run too hard, they get over their skis, they over-rotate, whatever the word is, that's a problem. If the dogma keeps them going forward, they got to step back and pause. If they over-promise and they don't focus on the problem that they're really solving, there's nothing wrong with doing one thing really, really, really well, as long as you do it really well with others. And that's what I meant by partnerships. Yeah. I think that there's not enough of, I think everybody's trying to say, oh no, we're going to be all things to all people from this little spot in the stack. And I think everybody figures that, no, you're not going to be. So that's putting, that's moderating some of the potential results. And you know, we're predicting somewhere in the in the in the 23, 24 uh, percent range uh, growth for the last year and the next couple of years. Great growth, but that's not blowing the doors off. Yeah, they got, we got to get some blowing doors going on. And I think the other indicator that I'm going to look for, just to end my piece, is. I want to look for some of the VC investment uh, data points as a bellwether. Obviously, the early stage stuff is pretty, fairly easy to do, but I want to see a lot more early stages. I'd like to see B rounds because the B rounds, Series B financing, Series C is growth capital. That is something that is an indicator of yeah. blowing the doors off. Or getting ready to. Getting, or getting ready to, exactly. So the last thing I'll mention, John, uh, for me anyway, is that uh, we had hoped to hear more about applications. We'd hoped to hear more about how the applications are going to evolve. 
Uh, and uh, that's one of the areas of research that we're going to focus on over the course of the next quarter or more. Think about how applications happen in this big data space. I don't think we got some of those answers. I think people don't understand. I think my, my vision, and I've always been saying this, and I'm kind of coming back to it. We'll see if I'm right or not. But I think you're going to see a long tail distribution of a power law. And the question is, what's going to be the head and the neck of that distribution? And certainly in the long tail, you have specialty tools and apps that are just natively data. They're not going to be standalone companies. They could be kind of boutiques or you know, cash flow businesses, but it might be a very skinny neck where you only have a few power players, winner take most platforms that has to power that. So, when, you know, to me, the, the big company apps aren't coming out. We're not seeing uh, the, the, what we saw in the 90s where an ERP app became a fully public company. I think you have to be a platform, you have to be an enabling platform, you have to have open data. So, to me, those apps are already kind of developing, but there's no monster flashpoint of, look at the app tsunami coming in. I don't think we're going to see the tsunami of new apps, it's just apps in general are, are going to be everywhere. I think that's something to watch. So, but what I would say, uh, whatever, whether, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, the long tail or whether there are going to be some uh, big ones, I'm not advocating one way or the other. But I am advocating for a, an agreed upon framework for thinking about how it's going to unfold. That's what's still missing. All right, guys, thanks so much for a great show. Jeff Frick, Peter Burris, I want to thank the audience for watching. I uh, really appreciate, you know, seventh season of The Cube. We'll be off to Dublin, and, and you're going to see the cadence of The Cube pumping out content. Go to siliconangle.com as the reference point for all the, all the tech, technology, innovation, and content. Siliconangle.tv to find out where The Cube is, siliconangle.tv. And, of course, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle for all the videos. And always go to Twitter and search on the hashtag Cube Gems and Cube Cards to get snackable nuggets of what's going on in The Cube. And I want to thank our sponsors and thank all the team here on the ground from SiliconANGLE Media and extended team and production. Guys, great job. Fantastic event and production. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you in Dublin.